My question is as follows. We see in the world a lot of suffering. A great deal of it is caused by man. But if God had not created the world, there wouldn't be any suffering. Now my question is quite simple. What is the point of creation? Okay. And how can the people who suffer be convinced that God exists? Thank you. Please sit down. <coughs> the issue of suffering is a time-old dilemma faced by man, particularly by moralists, by the leaders of religion, etc. What is the philosophy of suffering? Why should God, if he is, you know, all merciful and all forgiving, why should he create suffering at all? This issue has been debated among the philosophers, among the religious leaders, various religions and their founders uh, from times immemorial as, I, as far as I can reach. The one philosophy which was offered by Zoroaster seemed to be a mechanical and simple answer to that. He believed, not he, but some of his followers later on, not he himself, believed that there are two gods. One is of evil and one is of goodness. And they go on playing a seesaw between them. Sometimes the hand of the evil god is, is, is descendant and over, above and becomes stronger. And sometimes the hand of the good god or god of goodness becomes powerful and gains the upper hand. This is a philosophy, but in fact a childish attempt to resolve the issue. Because that means there is no hope at all. There is no evolution. There is no set direction towards betterment of our affairs. Because if this is a, just an accidental thing, then it can go on and on forever. But apart from this Zoroastrian philosophy, which is, I believe, wrongly understood by some philosophers of later ages, all other divinely revealed scriptures speak of only one God, and he is the God of goodness, and there is no evil created by him. So what is suffering then? How is it born? If you understand this uh, philosophy correctly, then automatically the issue of evil will be resolved. Because, you know, sun sends radiation, radiation down to earth and the whole universe around the sun is illuminated by the radiation of the sun. Whichever is closer is more radiant, which is farther away is less radiant, but the sun is the source of light. Who created shadows? Who created darkness? None. It is the lack of light which creates shadows and darkness. Night in itself is not a positive value. It is a pole, an opposite pole of light which cannot be done away with. Anyone can choose to move from light to shadow or to darkness. So this choice is that of the person if he is given this option. If he makes the wrong decisions and opts for darkness instead of light, how can that God be blamed for this who created the sun? for the purpose of enlightening. Now, I'm talking in general metaphors and, and, and they should not be applied in every detail because night also, the night also has its values. The Holy Quran speaks of that very clearly, that night is also essential for you. But when you symbolize these things, then light means goodness and evil means, e uh, um, darkness means evil. Happiness, 
can be likened unto light and misery and sorrow and suffering can be likened unto darkness. So is this uh, illustration applicable to the human experience or not? This is the second point which I want to clarify. I believe it is applicable because man's reluctance to accept the divine instruction most often creates evil from him himself. Like man's defiance of medical advice can create evil from him for him which is of his own doing. Now the issue is spread over not only one generation but generation after generation. There are some collective effects as well which are created by our forefathers and uh, we cannot run away from them yet we share the sufferings despite the fact that they were not of our own doing. So these issues become more complex when you reach this stage of resolving them because then another issue will is evolve as to why should a generation suffer for, for crimes or omissions for which its forefathers were, re were responsible, not that generation. I have taken up this issue and I have attempted to resolve it from all various angles in a, a recently finished work on the question of uh, a revelation, knowledge, wisdom, etc., etc., where I feel you can find many answers to this question which have many sidedness. And I have tried to explain the philosophy of creation and I have tried to establish establish that in the philosophy of creation the moment you introduce the element of option there has to be suffering along with happiness. In no way can you do away with suffering. But suffering is sometimes punishment and sometimes not. When I say you inherit some um, the, the results or consequences of some misbehavior of your parents or you know, forefathers, however remote they may be. I'm not talking of crime and punishment. I'm talking of cause and effect. They're two different things. So in the world, particularly in the uh, study of evolution, it is not crime and punishment which we observe. It is the cause and effect which we observe. And in the world of cause and effect, there is also suffering and happiness. They go hand in hand. Remove one and the other will disappear at, at the same time. So this is a very profound issue which has to be read, you know, at layer and um, spoken of at a, you know, with far greater time at your disposal than I have been allotted here in this brief time. So I hope you wait for the time when this book is published and as I have promised you, if you read the entire chapter, you will find many answers to what has been agitating your mind regarding the suffering. And if still there are some things unanswered, then you can contact me if you are still interested in my answers and uh, through your friends here or directly by writing to the mosque in London, you can find, have time appointment with me and inshallah we will discuss it further. You, you understand my limitations, why I can't explain everything in detail. Right, thank you.